scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat. You find that in scripture. Then you go and apply it. Seven o'clock you get up and you open your business. Say, what are you doing? I'm just starting. It takes diligence to establish credibility. Someone can be sleeping and people will call him because of a relationship that has been built for 10 years. You are just starting. Don't lie down and expect somebody to call you. I hope we are still together. Please obtain grace to stay with the word. Obtain grace. This running from pillar to post, minimize it this year and settle down. Let's come and knock the door of your house and say, look, I'm studying. Not because I have a sermon to preach, because I have a destiny to fulfill. There is a mandate upon my life and I will not fail. Lord, open my eyes. And you are studying and light from heaven enters you. And like someone who is drunk, you begin to rejoice. It says, I found your word and I did eat it and it was a joy and a rejoicing to me. I sense in my spirit that David's Christian Center will record phenomenal testimonies this year. That, listen, there, there are supposedly, for want of word, ordinary people, pastor, who as at this conference may be sitting quietly, but by March, when they come to stand here, they say, my life is a testimony that the word produces. Listen. Carry beans or maize seed and keep it on top of your table. It does not grow because although it is seed, there is something you must do with it. Are we together now? Yes. Many people have gotten precious seeds, wonderful seeds, but we are not engaging it. The ministry of the word. Number three, so that we'll wrap up. I believe someone's spirit is being fired up this night. And let me just say this. Beware of people who don't even know they are being used by the devil. Who wait just where you have made a commitment to be spiritual. Here they come. In the name of friendship and brotherly kindness, they come and deflate your fire. They may not be bad people. Listen, listen. They may not be bad people. But if you are carrying Isaac to the place of sacrifice, there are good people you have to say, wait at the base here. This height we are climbing, I have to go alone. Being alone and being lonely are two different things. You must sustain the courage to move the direction of your destiny, even if it means editing people. Because there are many people who just when they make commitments for God, somebody just comes and says, you know what, uh, you are studying, can't you shift it? I think there's something, there's one movie. With... It's a movie, you can watch it again. I don't know about you, but this is the secret to this life you are seeing. The word of God took me literally. Anybody who ignores the word, you are trying to turn God into a magician. Be ready for surprises. God is a miracle worker, not a magician. Obtain grace to engage. Listen, especially over the areas that are not working in your life. Take inventory of the areas that are working and thank God for it. 
then gain greater knowledge but sample the areas that are not working i'm healthy i'm doing well i'm enjoying a nice relationship with my wife and children but this finance thing now it's time to take it as a project and settle down the bible says through wisdom proverbs 18 and verse 1 a man having separated himself that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom lord why am i like this why is it I, that i am a sincere person but i never have good people come around me there is something you don't know about relationships go to the word he says he that wants friends must first show himself friendly there may be something you are not doing you have not seen the value of men and the value in men oh this is the mistake i've been making i've been destroying good relationships sincerely because i do not know that relationships are investments and the holy spirit speaks to you go and listen to pastor mildred's teaching that she did this this and that and you now listen in two weeks you have become a new version of you by march god would have brought strategic people to your life and people wonder and say what did you do that this person just gave you a car you didn't do anything is that true is it true that you didn't do anything you've heard me say favor is merited their favor is dimensional it is only one dimension of favor that is unmerited proverbs 13 15 good understanding procured favor but the way of the transgressor is hard if someone comes to give pastor mildred right now or her dear husband a, a, a plot of land or a house or a car it's easy to think that oh because they are great men of God you find out what was done first nothing just happens you know that so it's time to make your own happen in the name of Jesus the force of the word this year settle down what is not working in my life Lord grant me grace I believe I married a good man, but we are tired of hitting our heads from pillar to post. Lord, there has to be an answer, and the Spirit of God takes you to Scripture. It may take a while, but let that while meet you studying, not complaining. Let that while meet you studying. Lord, I've been in Lagos for 10 years and I've not gotten a job. Someone just came to David's Christian Center in two weeks and he got a job. What am I doing wrong? This is not jealousy or competition. This is, is you, are, you are provoking yourself to godliness. Let me tell you, until you get angry with some things and get dissatisfied, they will never leave you. Dissatisfaction is a gift. It can push you to a new level. For some of you, you have experienced dimensions of God spiritually, financially, but you are camping around mediocrity. Shake that local champion mentality and trust God to push you. The world is your stage. Stop celebrating success too early. I'm better than this and that. Compared to what? Paul at the zenith of his apostolic ministry he said this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind and facing the things that are before me he said I press find out who is pressing the man who wrote two thirds of the New Testament make up your mind that this is not the time to start celebrating success too early pat yourself at the back Lord I thank you for this but there are heights and we We'll never settle for less We know there's more that's found in you In ministry, in business And we will never settle for less When we know there's more that's found in you Sing it one more time, provoke yourself And we will never settle for less we know there's more found in you apostle but i'm a mighty prophet compared to what have you turned nigeria's problem overnight what prophets in the bible who said by this time tomorrow thank god for what you have seen but you are still at the infancy i am a great teacher compared to what paul who spoke before Agrippa before Felix and he said you almost converted me as hardened as they were let me tell you this the spirit of a champion is the spirit of a presser you never settle 
let those behind you keep clapping for you while you keep shifting and moving I made a covenant with myself that I would never allow the applauds of men to close the doors of new levels for me. Lord, thank you for what you are doing, but there is more. Compared to where you are taking us, we are just a step out of the cave. Keep us humble. That's why pride is a killer. If you are here and you are suffering from the spirit of pride, repent this night and go for a retreat after this conference. People brag over nothing, just little results. I am amazed at the passion of your pastor and their wife in spite of the phenomenal work they are doing across the body, blessing people with their thoughts in, on family life especially, and yet you keep seeing them press. I was having a discussion with your pastor yesterday and I was very humbled by his passion just listening and I said, this is the spirit of a winner. Can I tell you? When you say they are clapping for me, look at those clapping first. Before you say I'm a champion, look at those clapping. Who are the people clapping? Am I challenging you? Obtain grace. Man of God, go back to the drawing board. Thank you for what you have done, but there is more. Prophetess, prophet, there is still more. Businessman, you've not conquered Lagos yet. Thank God that you have started, but come on. Have you been able to give and fund a conference without it affecting your finances? If the answer is no, you are not yet there. Thank God for what you have done, but keep pressing. Number three, we have to close. <laughs> Pray in the spirit for one minute, please. Hallelujah. Number three, very quickly, we're wrapping up now. The third spiritual force that is responsible for helping believers to make spiritual progress is called discipleship. Please write it down. Every apostle was once a disciple. The word apostle there should not be limited to preacher. It just means once who is sent. That means without training, your being sent is only a risk to your destiny. There are many believers who will never submit themselves to be structurally mentored. You see, a disciple is simply a student and a learner. Please look up. I love you with all my heart and I'm standing to share the burden of your pastors this year. Graduate from being a member to being a student. I always say it when I'm speaking, you know, I, I tell our people, fans don't have any inheritance. I am a fan of this. That's wonderful. I believe they are well intentioned. But the only people who receive are those who are students. It is from the word disciple that you coined the word discipline. The staying power, the resolve to remain until you become. Jesus called them to be with him first before he would send them. There is no champion who just goes to the ring. You first stay with a coach. Many believers fail in life because they are not structurally mentored. They freelance knowledge here and there. The assignment of the local assembly, the assignment of Pastor Kingsley, Pastor Mildred, according to Jeremiah 3.15, he says, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and that they will feed you. Huh? They will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So your pastors are like spiritual chefs. They feed you week in, week out. That means every spirit that fights you from coming to church and then to settle down. Don't come to church and be browsing and be smiling and be doing all of these ones. I mean, you know, if you are smiling for joy but that you are distracted, you are in your own world by yourself while fire is coming from the altar. No. If you are too big to be discipled, then the throne is not for you. I assure you on that. Many people have made a shipwreck of their lives and their destinies through pride. They will not settle to listen. Jesus, surprisingly, even though he was the word incarnate at age 12, 
when his contemporaries would probably be running up and down the Bible says Jesus was at the temple learning under the scribes the law that he was coming to abolish he still submitted himself to that system and for 18 years we don't hear about Jesus again the next time we hear about him he's age 30 and John speaks and says behold the lamb Jesus did not just succeed because he was the son of God he submitted to learning for someone God is telling you you are destined for the throne but not this version of you you need to settle in church you need to be properly mentored in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the Bible says they continued steadfastly Acts 2 42 you read it down to 47 Acts 2 42 they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine is that in your Bible and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer the next verse as a result the Bible says and fear came upon every soul and many wonders were done by the apostles let's go to Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 very quickly the Bible says Paul haven't passed through the upper coast that he came and he found certain disciples Acts 19 from verse 1 it's just 1 to 4 but let's just look at verse 1 he found certain disciples not certain members they were saved but they were disciples now notice the person who discipled them was limited himself so they were taught after the limitation of that disciple they were saved but they were not filled with the holy spirit yet only god knows what more you need to learn thank god for what you know but what more you need to learn and paul asked them he said have you received the holy ghost since you believe verse 2 and they said we've not even heard if there be any holy ghost paul was surprised wow unto what baptism then were you baptized he asked them and they said the baptism of john they were discipled but limited that's the reason why you should salute your your pastors for being fast to be open to receive the diversities that are in the body of christ because they do not want this to become your state and paul now began to explain to them that the baptism of john was the baptism of repentance right that they should believe on who should come and when he had now spoken to them the bible says that they were baptized in the name of jesus and he laid hands on them and they were filled with the holy ghost and they spoke in tongues they prophesied and the bible says the number of them was 12 12 of them make up your mind that this is not the year you will give excuses for coming to church as a matured believer if you have to be coerced to come to the house of God I sincerely respectfully believe you are not serious hallelujah I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord and when you come to church from the opening prayer to the grace you are attentive Lord what do you have for me today my children are at the mercy of this revelation that is coming and as the word is coming you are attentive the Bible says the man looked at them expecting to receive something discipleship submit yourself to learning buy books submit yourself to knowledge and that also extends to people in business find someone who is clearly ahead of you and unashamedly submit to learn find someone who is clearly if you are not sure don't go there you need that gap that potential difference has to be there for you to receive colleague mentality is why every, many people remain grounded I'm not sure if I should receive this or not but when the difference is clear in results you will listen attentively learn from all men but find those with potent results and follow the Bible calls them the them who through faith and patience have obtained the results have obtained the promises apostle I'm doing business but it looks like this my business is not working well in Lagos there has to be somebody born again and filled with the Holy Spirit in that area submit yourself to learning 
there is something I do not know. It is amazing how humility can buy you something in one day that may take many people 10 years. The person may not tell you the answer you are looking for. You only say, sit down, let me give you a story. My journey started from 1971. That's your revelation there. It's your responsibility to fish out the one. He is telling you stories. They kept me under a bridge and I remember that night. I cried unto the Lord. I said, mercy. Uh-huh. You are learning now. You are writing all the keys you see let me tell you something masters are so professional sometimes when you watch them you don't see the steps you will have to trust God for grace okay this is what this person has said and then you go and do likewise and you come back with results that looks like you held a charm there is no result that cannot be reproduced if Jesus's result was reproduced there is no result that cannot be reproduced it is either ignorance or pride. May you reproduce fearful results in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The last key. Has God spoken to someone tonight? Hmm. Are you ready? The last key that helps people to make spiritual progress in this kingdom is service. And I'll stop here service service and there are two dimensions to this service number one service in the house of God and number two the service of a witness don't forget what I taught you tonight the forces and the keys that guide us to make spiritual progress number one the ministry of prayer number two the ministry of the word number three discipleship Number four, service. There are certain levels of growth you cannot attain until and unless you are actively in service. There are times you go to use a restroom and they put a big, um, uh, what they call that thing? There's like a sign there, out of service. That means don't bother coming here. It is not working. Some of us are carrying this all around our lives. Out of service, both to God and to men. And so everybody avoids you the same way we avoid that restroom. And you are wondering, come to me, but there's something in you saying, out of service. I am not a worker in the house of God. I am not a witness revealing Christ. What are you then? But I've seen certain filling stations that have queues. And you see beautiful cars queuing there. You are wondering, don't these people have anything else to do? They are patient because those stations are so in service. Sometimes late into the night, people still wait. May you be like that. In the name of Jesus Christ, that nations will come to seek the hand of God upon you. And let me tell you, there are many of you, people will inconvenience themselves with joy and say, we have discerned that the hand of God is upon you. We cannot but look to your direction. I'm prophesying to someone, in the name of my God and the one who lifts men, everybody who needs to find you and to be a blessing through your life and to bless you through their life, in Jesus' name, may your service attract them to you. Please sit down. Please sit down. There are many of you who have been in this ministry for a very long time. Exodus 23, 25. It's a deep mystery that God taught me. And I've had the privilege and the honor of teaching our workers. If you serve God just because the pastor and his wife are, say, your tribesmen, or they are sad because they know you and there's no way you can run away. You can't lie that you are walking, you are staying in their house. Or some kind of flimsy excuse. You must serve God by revelation. It says, and ye shall serve the Lord thy God and he shall bless. It's a covenant. This is called the covenant of service. You shall serve the Lord and he shall bless. Service does not mean coming to church. Service means making activities in the house of God work. So just because you came, you are a congregant, respectfully speaking. Those who are serving are those who made sure this pulpit was in place. That they came early in the morning making sure that everything is in place. Can I tell you, God rewards service. My God, I don't know which one, my own, my God rewards service. I'm telling you this. 
and there are some of you it looks like you have sat for a long time i said it in the mainland yesterday watch out the reward that is coming there is a name that god is called in hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 that he that cometh unto god must believe that he exists and then that he is the rewarder when god comes to you he gives you more than a salary he can, give you, he can give you a man's prayer point as a gift. He can carry the whole of a man's destiny and literally give it to you. It pays to serve Jesus. Hallelujah. Say service. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Psalm 84 and verse 10. Very quickly. It says, I'd rather be for a day in your court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Who is speaking here? King David. Please do not join people who think that the house of God is just a place that turns people to slaves. Oh, but you are walking. Keep doing that. You will never get a husband the way you are all in that. Which God are you talking about now? people feel stupid for being committed in church and we open up ourselves to maybe well-meaning but ignorant people who bring in philosophies and deflate your passion if you have been in this house for a while and you've not served obtained grace from god you are missing out on something there is a level of growth there are people whose prayer lives became strong because of their departmental prayers there are those who even discovered their call through service they never knew they were called Stephen thought he was in the welfare department yet there was a mighty mighty man of God in him there are things you will never find until you serve in the place of service you learn accountability you learn organization it's not just spirituality in the place of service you will meet with strategic people there are those who found their spouses in the place of service you were cleaning a chair you did not know that you were cleaning nonsense out of your destiny because it was your husband or your wife that was going to sit on it now that is hey, hey hold on that is not the reason why you should serve however it can be a reason as you serve There are people who found strategic destiny helpers while serving. They were so early cleaning the church and God directed a billionaire to come. Where is your pastor? He says, not around. He said, who are you? Well, I'm this and that and that. Why are you? You look like you're a nice person walking. Do you have a job? No, sir. How many years? Ten years. No job? Can you become the African director of this company? And it's as if he wants to scam you. You want to run away? And he said, no, no. It's what the blessing of the Lord can do. I know it sounds funny, but there are people who have what I'm telling you as a testimony. May you be the next one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this. Years ago, I went to preach in Mubi. And the man who was driving me, they had been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for a long time. Very sincere, nice man. And he was driving me. Usually I pray for the people who are within close proximity I make sure I speak over them and while he was driving me I started hearing the cry of babies I didn't know I didn't know the man from anywhere I said what is this and later I got to find out and I told him you have driven me except this car did not move that the, an end comes to this demonic thing whatever siege and that was the end of it Don't downplay what God can do through service. Service in the house of God and then all of us should be in service as witnesses. Acts chapter 1 and 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. And with great power gave witness of the apostles of the resurrection and great grace was upon them with great power they gave witness a witness is a validator that means your assignment is to make Jesus known 
we call it in our ministry Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified that that is the assignment you are not in service if Jesus is not being revealed to your life just because money is being revealed through your life does not mean you are in service except if that money reveals Jesus everything must end up revealing Jesus and glorifying him otherwise you are not in service let me show you one last scripture have I wasted your time tonight Micah chapter 3 from verse 16 to 18 Malachi my apologies Malachi chapter 3 please give it to us from verse 16 blessed be the name of the Lord Malachi 3 it says and they that feared the Lord and the Lord hearkened and all of that verse verse um, verse 17 now we're reading to 18 and they shall be mine said the Lord in that day when I make up my jewels I will spare them as a man spared his own son that not just his own son there is exemption in service that when certain plagues are coming upon men the son that serves there are many sons but the one that serves I will spare them now verse 18 then ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that served God and him that served not that means there are things God does in the life of a man that you say we are all Christians but what is the difference one is in service one is out of service I choose to be in service I choose to be in service more than the word servant is not supposed to be an insult if you understand what it means a servant is not a slave a servant is one who willfully has submitted himself to serve the king and this God that we serve is benevolent you can serve your way to favor you can serve your way to breakthrough Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet the next prophet was supposed to come out of the sons of the prophet but he served his way into a double portion of that anointing if God has given you the privilege to serve in this house please reject complaining Apostle, you don't know the problems I have. It's not only you. Every church, everyone, including our ministry, has it. There are things that are common to men. It should be too small a reason for you to keep complaining and grumbling. I choose not to be offended this year. I make up my mind that I will serve. They may step on my toes. I may sincerely step on the toes of others. But all be it, the truth is that we desire that Jesus be revealed, that Jesus be glorified. And you will see God lifting you. You will begin to flourish like the palm tree and like that cedar that is in Lebanon. There is no going down for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to pray and receive a prophetic word? Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for sparing me the time. I'm going to give us two prayer points. Then I speak over our lives and we're done. Please, I'd like you to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. I believe that a cloud is about to shift over someone's life right now. Just two prayer points. These four forces, the force of prayer, the force of the word, discipleship and service, obtain grace to walk in them. You want to make maximum spiritual progress. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Are there people of prayer everywhere inside outside following online i'd like you to begin to pray let it be from the depth of your heart i obtain grace to pray my prayer life you jack back to life let the fire upon my prayer altar Come alive. Come alive again. Someone is praying. In the name of Jesus Christ. I submit myself to the word of God. I submit to the authority of the word. More than science. More than logic. More than philosophy. The word of God becomes the framing point of my perceptions.
obtain grace to submit yourself to discipleship submit yourself beyond being a member of David's Christian Center submit yourself Lord I will learn thank you for Pastor Mildred thank you for her dear husband Pastor Kingsley I submit in the name of Jesus I take them as pastors you have given me I submit to wisdom I submit to learning I submit to rebuke I submit to instructions now pray for the grace to serve especially they that serve in this house for some of you it's a fresh call to serve to serve the Lord sincerely thou shalt serve the Lord and he shall bless your bread and your water take sickness far from you you are a leader in this church I want you to begin to pray a renewed commitment to serve with my resources to serve with my heart to serve with my gift and my talent void of offense void of dishonor to serve to serve as a husband the grace to serve your family with diligence and responsibility as a wife and a mother the grace to serve your husband to serve your children as a leader the grace to serve not to lord over hallelujah 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 i want to speak over your life when moses came and met pharaoh he said pharaoh thus saith the lord god of the hebrews let my people go that they may go and serve me the purpose of going is to serve if you are not going to serve progress and motion is useless let my people go not just to prove that i am god so the more you make progress in life it is because you have told god i'm ready to serve the moment you sign up for service you are ready for advancement fearful advancement no wonder the bible says in philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 it says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus that even though he was God in every way he considered it not robbery to be God but for the purpose of service that he humbled himself he became a man then he humbled himself in obedience and he died even the death on the cross wherefore because service always comes with lifting wherefore God had so highly exalted him the bible says and had given him a name an office that is above every other name that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord i want to stand in faith with pastor kingsley and his dear wife and to speak over your life the prophetic is very powerful don't get used to people making nonsense out of it. The prophetic can redefine and shift climates in your life. Hallelujah. Every word that you have received and every word prophetic decree that will be coming from this altar in the course of this year, can you have a renewed understanding about it? Sometimes it may be casual, but you can receive it. Lord, this is you speaking to me. We are made by prophecy. Ezra chapter 6, I think from 14, it says, and they, prof they prospered through the prophesying. The prophesyings of Zechariah the prophet, it says, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo, and they builded and finished it 
according to the commandment of God. God commanded it. While they were building, prophets were prophesying. It has been commanded that it's your year of flourishing. That is God's command. But now it must be prophesied upon you. It says they were building, but they prospered through the prophesying. And by a prophet, it says the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God who has shown us mercy and help. David's Christian Center, in the name of Jesus, I speak to you. Every door that has refused to open over your life and destiny, we command it open now. 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 Is there anyone in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Let me declare favor on someone. A stranger you did not know, they will be directed by my God to surprise you this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's a master. We have toiled all night. For someone you kept toiling all through 2022. I place grace on your head. Go and prosper. Go and prosper. Go and prosper. Make progress. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you through rebellion and disobedience like Samson, you have lost your glory. But is there hope for a tree? The Bible says there is hope for a tree. Maybe you despise the prophets God put over you. Maybe you despise instructions. But I stand as a voice of mercy tonight and I declare, get back to the place of honor. The prodigal son, through pride and rebellion, he was now degraded to a point where he was feeding with swine. The Bible let us into his contemplation and he said, how many hired servants has my father? And I'm here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And while the father saw him afar off, he hugged him, kissed him, restored the signet ring, a sign of honor, put a robe upon him. I don't know what you lost through this honor. There was a grace God was blanketing this ministry with. Yet he did not speak in your life because you despise your prophets. In the name of Jesus, may the God of all grace restore, 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 restore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. For someone who has been crying, let me speak to you. Weep not, it is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm wrapping up. Can I pray for your spiritual life? Every attack on your prayer life that has made your prayer life become zero, fasting zero, commitment for spiritual things. There were some of you, you were people who loved God but right now your life has gone haywire, bad friends, bad associations, and you say it does not matter. In the name of Jesus, be delivered now from the company of wicked and unreasonable people. Be delivered now. The grace to pray, the spirit of prayer and supplication, I release upon your life now. The spirit of revelation, According to Ephesians 1 from verse 15 to 20, may that grace come upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray for your finances? Please don't say it does not matter. It is not lack of wisdom. It is, not, it is completely lack of wisdom to say it does not matter. Don't join people who downplay the role that finances has to play in your life. Most people have compromised because of this finance thing. Are we together? 
there are people who love God walking in the dignity of kingdom integrity. Satan tried every other means and they did not fall. But he used this money thing and they fell like a pack of cards. It's not enough to say, don't do this, don't go there. We must be able to speak over your life. I hope you know that there is a dimension of prosperity that comes through prophecy. Yes, sir. It's not a license for laziness. Be valuable. Turn your value to products and services. Serve it to a targeted consumer base. But at the back of your mind, remember that there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. The prophet said, by this time, tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, everything that should have entered your heart but was hijacked by demonic forces. I stand by the God of heaven. Please hear me. Between now and the end of January, I stand by the God who called me. May my God surprise you. Now and January, ending January, may my God surprise you. May my God surprise you. May my God surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let the sound of celebration and the sound of rejoicing not end in this church this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Now listen to me everyone. Please let me have your attention. There are people here who need Jesus. You need Jesus now. You need Jesus fast. Please no movement. Let's just stand to honor what the call that I'm about to make. You see, when I started ministry, we were told and trained to make altar calls so that we can depopulate hell and you know and all of that. But as I have grown in the things of God, God has poured within me the compassion of Jesus over people. When I make altar calls, it's not a ritual to just show that a man of God is balanced and serious. The issue of Jesus Christ is a serious issue. This is beyond a preacher's issue. This is beyond a conference issue. In every service that was ordained by God, there must be people sent there by God who would have an opportunity to encounter the Son of the living God. He says, and this is the record that God had given us eternal life. He says, and this life is in His Son, so that who so hath the Son had this life. You can receive healing, but without salvation, you did not receive much. You can even receive a prophetic word like you just did, but without genuine salvation and encounter with the God of the Bible, not much can be done. Satan has legitimate access to any life that has not been washed by the blood. You may be here, outside, and for those watching by way of television or watching online, let tonight be your night. I'm standing here in faith with the angels over this house and I want to make an altar call. An altar call is not like coming to a funeral where people drag themselves in shame and come and stand before. No, it is an honorable call for those who are courageous enough to wave Satan goodbye and say, I have found Jesus the way, the truth and the life. And perhaps there are others who at one time you've given your life to Jesus but sincerely, whilst you are here, you know that things have gone haywire. You need to rededicate your life to Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. I'm out of time. I want you to boldly and unashamedly come to the front here and come and stand in front. Don't, don't wait for someone to be the first. I begin my counting. Leave your seat and come and stand here. Come to Jesus. One. Two, if you are coming, run. Those coming from outside, allow them come. David's Christian Center, is this the best you can do for them? Come, come, come. Hallelujah. Come. The first law of flourishing is that you must be planted. The first law of flourishing is that you must be planted. It is they that are planted, not they that are around. Being around is not the same as being planted. Are we still celebrating Jesus? Come. 
Can you just dress them so they don't inconvenience the woman of God? Come. You can scatter them. There's still a little space there. God bless you. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Come in You don't have to kneel for space. Just stand. look at me those of you in front I salute you sincerely for the courage to come and make this noble decision this is the noblest the wisest way to start your year you see more than coming to stand in front of God's people you must be determined the Bible says for if thou shalt confess with thy heart the Lord Jesus believing that God raised him from the dead that you shall be saved for it is with the heart that we make confessions unto righteousness the hard man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation thank you for making this noble decision and for those who are making it online jesus is right there with you please follow suit as i lead them to pray may i request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender to jesus say this after me please say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord my Savior and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you and we honor you for these ones you have so graciously convicted. Thank you for the ministry of your spirit, the ministry of your word. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. You have brought them by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god in the name of jesus christ i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit that you'll be grounded and established in righteousness from tonight you go forward ever and backward never you are saved in jesus matchless name i pray amen and amen now please look at me just an instruction I request that you move to my right which will be your left there are counselors waving their hands they'll just lead you and have a quick information about you just um, a few minutes and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go thank you thank you let's keep clapping as they go God bless you Hallelujah. Pastor Mildred, thank you so very much. May the Lord bless you. David's Christian Center, thank you so much. May the Lord increase you. In Jesus' name. I know you, the way you're... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze 
and don't forget to like for us thank you